friends, it's good to be back with you. I know we've taken a few weeks off from the video blog, but uh, we're right back in the saddle this week. Uh, today I just want to talk to you a little bit about uh, just a little bit of where I've come from in a sense of my personal history with God. Like a lot of you watching this, in 1996, I was, uh, 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 in the fall of 1996, I was a freshman in college, and I had this life-changing encounter with the Holy Spirit. And during that time, we had the the renewal uh, and revival outpourings. And I remember, uh, after having this encounter with the Lord, walking into my first renewal meeting, and kind of looking around and going, this is, this is just a little strange to me. And then... Uh, a few minutes later, the worship starts, and I remember the worship was so powerful, and the presence of God was so powerful. I said, I, I remember thinking to myself, I will give the rest of my life to live in an outpouring and to live in a place where the glory of God is moving. And I just committed my life to do that. And one of the questions that I began to ask myself, even as a young man, was as we experience this outpouring, having grown up in... Uh, in church, having been instructed in godly ways, but maybe not seeing an outpouring of the Spirit uh, on a continual basis in a very real way, I begin to ask the Lord, what, how do we keep, how do we live in this outpouring? Because I was convinced in my own heart that uh, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was God's desire. The, uh, in a sense, it wasn't just for a moment of visitation, but it was for a continual outpouring. So I began to ask the Lord uh, these questions. How do we position ourselves? How do we as a community of people become, how do we as a church become a people who live in this outpouring? And uh, uh, I remember that specifically in December of 2006, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me and he used this word reformation. He said, there's a reformation of the church that's taking place. And I know that there's uh, a number of different aspects, obviously, to this reformation. There's a number of different uh, avenues and things that the Lord is doing in the earth. But I'm absolutely convinced of this, that at the center of what God is doing in the earth is an absolute, complete outpouring of the Holy Spirit that the earth has never seen. And here's just a few things that the Lord has spoken to me over the number of years of, of, of this outpouring that I believe that we're living in the beginning stages of, but we haven't seen the full measure of. And I know many of uh, you understand that, that kind of uh, terminology. Here's one thing that the Lord said to me. He said, you cannot exaggerate what I'm about to do in the earth. Uh, here's another thing. We're in the beginning drizzles of the greatest outpouring the earth has ever seen. Here's another thing. This coming move of God will make the original outpouring of the Holy Spirit look like child's play. And here's, the, here's one last thing I'll just share in this video blog. Uh, the Lord said to me, the expression of God is about to change in the earth. And uh, over five years ago, I was just spending some time just communing with the Lord, and He opened this, this vision up to me, and I've shared it a number of places. I was hesitant to share it um, right away in, in, in the number of places that the Lord opens the door for me to minister in different parts of, of the world, in different parts of this country. But, uh, and, it's, and it's on our, our website now, but I, I want to share this to you. I know it might seem a little odd me reading this to you, but I believe it, uh, me uh, reading it expresses most accurately what I felt like I experienced that day. On the morning of March 27, 2007, I was spending some time with the Holy Spirit, and He dropped the following vision into my spirit. This was not an open vision, but rather the type of vision Daniel describes in Daniel chapter 4, verse 10. Now, these were visions in my mind. And, and this is what the Lord showed me. I saw a dead body in a stage with young people speaking life into the body. And the Holy Spirit said to me, I will not only do this in the natural, but I also do this in the spiritual. The Holy Spirit is calling forth for generation of deadness into life. Yes, truly, Jesus is the resurrection and life. And he's calling this generation that seems so spiritually empty back to life. He's calling in this hour those things which are non-existent or appear to be dead in the, the body of Christ to come alive. Churches and groups that are spiritually dead and non-existent to come forth. The call should be made clear in this hour that those who want to be part of what God is doing in this hour must pay clear attention to what the Holy Spirit is saying in this hour. For I seek to revive that which is dead for the raising of life. Just as the town took notice when Lazarus rose from the dead, so too will the nations take notice when I raise to life that which I want to do in this hour. I saw a stadium filled to capacity with people and the glory of God descending in that place. They were not there to meet with a man or just come to a meeting, but they were... Uh, there because they had heard if they come hungry, God would meet them. As they worship, healings take place all over the crowd. Creative healings, ears growing into place where there were 
no blind eyes. Blind eyes that have never seen the light of day are being opened. Muscles growing back into place where there were no muscles. All this happens as the Holy Spirit orchestrates. The worship band is quite simple, but a cloud of His manifest presence of God is clearly seen by many over the stage in which they worship. Angels hover over the stage as other angels dance to the right and to the left of the stage. There's a clear open heaven over the stage where the worship team ministers. At this point, in, in the vision, I was reminded of Jacob's ladder experience in, described in Genesis 28. A young man uh, stands to speak and encourages people to continue pressing in everything that the Holy Spirit is doing around the stadium. He also prays and asks God for more of his fire to fall. Fireballs from heaven fall upon the people. As they hit, uh, hit people, the power of God hits them and bodies fall and shake and weep under the power of God. There's a deep sense of brokenness that hovers over the people as they are in complete awe of what the Holy Spirit is doing throughout the stadium. Reporters who are intrigued by what is taking place gather at the stadium to report about the thousands of people who have come to meet with God. Some try and criticize but are immediately hit with conviction. Others receive calls from their home base asking what exactly is taking place because there are reports of fire over the entire stadium and people are just wailing before the Lord. Others report that people are leaving bars and heading to stadiums to see what God is doing. Now a dead body has been brought into the st stadium and instead of fear and trembling coming upon the people, crowds begin to get excited. They begin to declare, live, live. Others hold their Bible in the air and cry out that Jesus would be glorified through the death and the resurrection of this person. Now the scene has switched to the outside of the stadium and the flow of traffic from the entire city is heading toward the massive stadium. The huge billboard outside the stadium simply declared, God is in the house, 21st day. Come anytime and meet with God. It's now evening and the lights are on in the stadium and another, another young man is preaching. He appears to be Hispanic. In fact, he's preaching in Spanish. It's being interpreted into English. He is simply declaring that the work Jesus did on the cross... He calls those forward who need Jesus in their life to come forward. Many come with Hispanic faces. The young Hispanic man preaching begins to pray. As he prayed, nearly half of those who have come for the offer of salvation are now on their backs. Many others slithering on the ground and apparently demon-possessed. The young man declares that where sin abounds, the grace of God abounds much more. People run to those who are apparently demon-possessed and declare that they must go and bow to the name of Jesus. The scene now again switches to the crowd standing and simply worshiping. The presence of the Holy Spirit is very evident as people worship. A young man introduces the mayor of the city, although I cannot hear in which city or nation all this has taken place. The mayor stands up and declares the city to be a refuge and a sanctuary for the Most High God. He also states that earlier he had been on the phone with other mayors from around the country. They too are wanting to publicly declare their cities as refuge of the Most High God. And then uh, there was like, I always remember this, there was like words that came off uh, like a, 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 a computer screen you'd see and it said, the end. And uh, I want to relate two experiences after this, this kind of stadium vision that the Lord showed me uh, about five and a half years ago. Uh, it, it was uh, one time when I was standing in Mexico City, uh, it was the first time I'd been there, and the Lord uh, spoke to my heart and he said to me, uh, tell them that their soccer stadiums uh, were not built uh, simply for sporting events, that they were built to be places where people would gather and worship the Lord. Uh, and, and since then, he's told me 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And then I was in uh, Brazil. I, I, I go to Brazil now uh, maybe twice a year, sometimes three times a year. And the Lord spoke to me, and he, he said the same thing. Tell, tell the people in Brazil that their soccer stadiums were not simply built for people to, for sporting events, but they were built for people uh, to worship the Lord. And I believe that there will be a time where uh, across the world, literally, that stadiums will be filled with people worshiping the Lord, not just for one event, uh, not just for even a large conference. I think that we've seen these things and different things around the world, but we are going to see actually stadiums 24 hours a day, seven days a week as places where the glory of God comes. So. We are in a season of great outpouring, and God is inviting us to be a part, and uh, we are responsible. I believe that this outpouring in just a, a very small measure has begun, and God is calling us to be a part of this. We have an opportunity. We have the privilege of being part of the greatest move of God that is literally going to change the expression of Christianity, and I invite you... Uh, to be, to join in what God is doing and what God is doing in the